This is the second video resource accompanying the playbook for running creative strategic foresight workshops or Googleopoly workshops. In this video um, I've provided examples of the use of hindsight and insight for foresight um, as, well as, as well as just interesting facts about the development of technology, um, information technology and learning technology in particular in the past which can be used by the participants in the workshop or the facilitator as sparks for igniting the creativity of the participants for um, inspiration. Um, you, they, they can be used also as examples um, for as, as starting points for finding other examples of hindsight and insight that can be used for foresight. As a first exercise I offer this quote someone at some point in time um, said something about something <laughs> and your task is to try to guess what this quote is about, what does the quote refer to, who said it and when. So the quote goes, the multitude of something is a great evil. There is no limit to this fever for something. Everyone must be something, some out of vanity, to acquire celebrity and raise up a name, others for the sake of mere gain. Try to think who said that and when. Done guessing? It will be revealed soon. This was said by Martin Luther in the year 1530 and it refers to books. The multitude of books, Martin Luther said, is a great evil. There is no limit to this fever for writing. Everyone must be an author, some out of vanity to acquire celebrity and raise up a name, others for the sake of mere gain. And as an example of how hindsight can turn into insight, here is something from today. Andrew Keane's lament of the cult of the amateur and the affordances of the internet which can make anybody an author and um, Andrew Ke thinks that today's internet is killing our culture and assaulting um, our, our economy. Can you think of other examples where something uh, which was said long ago about um, um, a, a vanished technology or a practice is still valid today or has become newly valid. Can you think of other examples of quotes from the past which um, are just as valid today or which have um, recently become valid? That will be examples of hindsight. Other examples um, include the technologies which you can see in this in this slide um, and the, the, the idea here is to inspire your thinking about how quickly some things change especially when it um, it comes to um, what technology can do the affordances um, the, 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 the new ideas so um, here you can see the first the, the prototype of the first mount, mouse creating created in 1964 by Dr. Douglas um, Engelbart in the um, upper left hand side corner you can see part actually not all of it but part of baby and um, baby was the world's first mp3 player created in manchester um, occupying a couple of rooms and um, it was capable of playing baba um, black sheep and god save the queen um, you can see an example of today's mp3 players and actually that's um, a, a little bit now a, a little bit outdated example already and lastly you can see an advertisement of the hard disk that you've been waiting for if you lived in the in the 90s um, and you can see how much how cheaper and um, better technology has become so this is all about the pace of change from hindsight to insight. If this is how quickly some things have changed, um, what awaits us in the future? Let's undertake another thought experiment. Um, this one comes from Carl Sagan, who suggested that we think about what would it look like if the whole of the history of the universe was collapsed into one calendar year, so one rotation of the Earth around the Sun. Um, all 15.5 billion years of lifespan of the universe from the Big Bang, uh, Big Bang to uh, till now, to be compressed into 12 um, calendar months from from January to um, to December. 
in this scenario, um, not much actually will happen um, from January until November, um, at least as far as the planet Earth is concerned. Um, however, somewhere around Christmas time, the dinosaurs appear on the scene. Then, at around half past ten in the evening, on um, New Year's Eve, humans um, appear. And then all of human history, on record, happens during the last ten seconds of that one calendar year, um, into which 15.5 billion billions of years were um, compressed. Think about the pace of change. Think about what exactly has happened in those um, 10 seconds of that calendar year of all the technologies which have emerged. For example, 37,000 years ago, the Cro-Magnon man was the first, became the first user of language. 6,000 years ago, um, the Sumerian clay tablets were created, which were examples of the first, um, the, the first example of written language. 3,000 years ago, the Greek alphabet arrived. 500 years ago, the printing press. 160 years ago, the telegraph, then the telephone. Then 50 years ago, plus or minus, the television came. Then the cable television. Then the first com electronic computer was created, INYAC, followed by the internet, by cellular telephones, and the list goes on. Change is happening faster um, as far as technology is concerned. Com technology for communication, for learning, um, for, for collaborating. Let's try a different example. Have you used Blackboard recently? But no, not this one. <laughs> not not the VLE Blackboard. As an example of a different kind of change, let's consider a different Blackboard. This one. The history of the Blackboard provides a wonderful, fascinating example of um, innovation, um, learning technology innovation. How long does it take for learning technology innovation to be accepted, to spread, to become um, uh, taken, taken for granted. Before the blackboard was created, um, in an example of what can be um, referred to as personal learning devices, teachers had to um, write um, the relevant parts of the lesson, etc. on um, the slates that students, that each individual student would have. Um, so it was an example of a personalized learning environment. So the teacher would would, would, would write uh, personalized instructions as per the needs of the individual, individual pupils. Then a Scotsman, um, James uh, Pillens, who was a geography teacher, came up with a brilliant idea. It's, I, I, I love this um, the, the story and the, the example of brilliant thinking. Um, what James Billens did was he put the small slates, uh, small writing slates together on the wall um, to make the first um, to make the first blackboard. This happened around 1801. Then an instructor at West Point, um, whose name was George Barron, uh, became the first American instructor to incorporate the, um, uh, to, to start using large black chalkboards. Uh, in the presentation of his uh, math lessons. And um, the chalkboard, the blackboard, um, took overtook the um, wor world of education by, by storm, you can say. This is when an American instructor at the uh, West Point Military Academy started using blackboard in his math lessons. And um, you can judge the reaction of the educational world by the uh, following quotes. Um, one of which is, in the winter of 1813-14, during my first college vacations, I attended a mathematical school kept in Boston by the Reverend Francis Xavier Brosius. On entering his room, we were struck at the appearance of an ample blackboard suspended on the wall, with lumps of chalk on the ledge below and cloths hanging in either side. I had never heard of such a thing before. There it was, 42 years ago, that I first saw what now I trust is considered indispensable in every school, the blackboard, and there that I first witnessed the process of analytical and inductive teaching. And this is a quote from May 1855. Also in um, 1841, uh, an educational writer made the following comment. 
the inventor or introducer of the system deserves to be ranked among the best contributors to learning and science, if not among amongst the greatest benefactors of mankind. So the blackboard was seen as a great invention, um, a, a fascinating discovery which would change the, the face of education. And yet, when you consider the timeline, the fact that it was introduced in 1801, um, um, by 1856, 72% of the schools in Canada were using blackboards. And five years later, in 1861, 83% of the schools um, had them. In um, 1870, um, one, um, over 90% of the schools were using them. But the blackboard was introduced in 1801, so it took around 60 years um, to this f wonderful discovery to actually become mainstream um, and to become wildly accepted, widely accepted. This is something to remember um, when we evaluate and consider the impact of uh, contemporary educational technologies um, before we dismiss them as a fad because they haven't become mainstream in the time span that we've imagined. It's easy to say that, well, the internet has been around for um, more than 30 years and um, look at the pedagogical uses of it, it's not convincing. Um, remember the first slide about the ever accelerating speed of technological um, innovation? Well, um, on a span of 60 years, the, the span of 60 years which um, it took to the blackboard to become wide, widespread, um, maybe we haven't given um, the web and its tools enough time. And the wonderful blackboard can provide actually an, one more example of how hindsight can be used for insight and for foresight. Take a look at, the, at this little slate, the original component of the blackboard which then became so, so, so widespread. The initial personalized learning environment, personalized learning tool, does it remind you of something? How about now? So you can see how technology has made a full circle, starting from the personalized um, learning tool where teachers would write different instructions and different content for each pupil on their little slate uh, onto the blackboard which was um, one for all kind of device uh, back onto the slate or um, the iPad back to personalization and individualized content. Now try to think in groups or individually of other examples of hindsight um, that is ideas, technologies, trends, events which have happened in the past and uh, which can inspire your finding, um, inspire you for, for to find an analogy uh, for similar developments today or maybe to lead you to ideas about what technology, um, learning, teaching or whatever you're interested in might look like in the future. Use these examples uh, for your discussions in the Googleopoly workshops. Good luck!